to your um, starting position. Start any way that you would like to. Um, child's pose, Sukhasana. You all know the, the options. Yay. All right. I'm gonna give you a few moments of quiet breathing. As you're breathing, trying to match the inhales and the exhales, feeling the power of your breath as it fills up your whole body. Giving your body exactly what it needs, it's the fullness of that breath to operate properly. And being here all together, we bring our breath together as well. And the next inhale, breathe in. And then share it out. And feel your lungs emptying, breathe in. And breathe out, share it again. You can either keep going with that breath or invite your ujjayi breath in. Inviting your ujjayi breath never has to be right now in this warm up position. Sometime before we start flowing, we want to commit to that ujjayi breath. So here we bring to mind our intention. This month you got to choose your own intention. Maybe you already have one, perhaps you haven't. And just for that, bring to mind a word that you want to bring out more in yourself. The key is remembering that everything is already within us. We just have to bring it out. So bringing that word, maybe the mantra that you picked to mind. And from wherever you are, we'll come to meet in a tabletop position. And we'll start in our tabletop with some wrist therapy. <laughs> With all the on our hands, it's been difficult. So we're going to turn our palms so our fingers are facing the midline of the mat. And we're going to flip our hands upside down. So we're on the backs of our hands, palms facing up, and fingers facing inside. Okay. And then we just want to move around a little bit. Obviously, this is not comfortable. <laughs> so you don't want to put too much weight on it. But you're just moving around. And what this is doing is it's kind of like doing an inversion, right? It's flipping uh, the perspective for our palms. We do a lot on our palms in yoga. Everything is on our palms, putting pressure on our wrists. And so we're giving it love here. Nice. And then come to be straight or just neutral. And we're going to press into the backs of our hands and round up through our back into a cat pose. And then come back to neutral, not to cow, just to neutral. And push up into cat. We'll do that one more time. And then you get to release <laughs> the center. And then press up into cat. Nice. Great. Then now make a fist. Make fists. 
with both hands. All right, so fists with both hands. We're in tabletop position. And we're gonna bend our elbows out to the side. So bend your elbows out to the side. Okay. And then we're gonna push back up into a cat pose. Okay. Out to the side and push up. Nice. These sorts of things are important to do. Anytime that we come to tabletop, you can always choose to do these movements. Take one more. Beautiful. We'll come back to a tabletop and let's roll through a couple of cat cows. This time focusing on our spine. You can start rolling through both of them. Getting your breath to your movement. And I was talking with Michelle about this yesterday. If you are feeling wrist pain ever, you should modify. Any kind of pain you're feeling, you should always modify for it. So if you are having, and you know, I just also talked to Julie, shoulder, wrist, anything, just modify. And I'll kind of talk a little bit about how you can modify it throughout class. Because it's hard, because everything is on our hands. All right, we'll come to a neutral tabletop again. We'll extend, bring your knees together to touch first. So knees together to touch and extend your right arm long in front of you. Okay, we're gonna flip the palm so that the palm is facing inside, fingertips are forward, okay? And now extend your left leg behind you. So opposite hand, opposite leg, point through your toes. Okay. Get nice and long and try to reach through your fingertips forward and your toes to the back. Take an inhale. Exhale, bird dog, bring your elbow and your knee in towards the center. Crunch it in. Okay. Now extend again and try to get as long as you can get and then crunch in again. Okay. Feel that core. And you're going to take two more. Extend, crunch. Extend and crunch it in. Awesome. All right, come down. We're gonna press our right hand into the mat and open to a modified side plank. So our right knee is down on the mat. Our left leg extends long and we reach our le uh, left arm up, okay? So a modified side plank, awesome. Good, here we're lifting from our side obliques. Okay, the bottom obliques lifting up and away from the mat. Nice. All right, now can you press into your back foot and lift your bottom leg up and then crunch in with your elbow and your knee? So I'll show you what it would look like, like that. Crunch elbow to bottom knee. Okay, option to just stay in the side plank. This is that spicy chorus. <laughs> core workout. I was telling you about do one more. Nice. And then come back to a tabletop position. Amazing. All right. We're going to go to the other side with our bird dog. Extend your left arm forward, palms face inside, fingertips spread wide, right leg goes back, point your toes. Yeah. Get nice and long. Pull the belly up, wrap the ribs in. Inhale. Exhale, bird dog, knee, um, elbow comes to knee. Yeah, extend and crunch in. Extend and crunch. We'll take one more and crunch. Awesome. Now come back to, um, we'll just plant your left hand, extend back, come open into a modified side plank. So your right leg is planted into the back of the mat. Nice. We pause here just to feel the modified side plank. Feel through the obliques. Nice. You can stay right where you are or press into that back foot so much that your bottom knee can lift up and you crunch into the center with your elbow. So sort of like the bird dog, but for the obliques. Yeah. Awesome. 
I see it. Take one more. Amazing. Come back down. Come to a tabletop position. Awesome. Come and have a seat back on your heels. Let's take some a couple more wrist movements. So we'll take our hands so that the fingers are pointing down and the palms are inward. And we'll bring our wrists back. Nice and go to the other side. Great, go back to the first hand. Now take your fingertips and slingshot them towards the back with your palm facing forward. And then go to the other side. Amazing. Last one, we'll just fling our hands out. Just fling. Let's shake them out. And then when you feel good and ready, downward facing dog. All right. Coming in to get into your down dog, as you know how. Another key in making sure our wrists are healthy is really distributing the distributing the weight so it's not all in the wrist, it's in the rest of our body, our core, all through our fingertips. Nice. All right. We'll step forward into Ragdoll as you're ready. Nice. And today's flow is what I'll call a ladder flow. So we'll, uh, we'll have a, a little set of movements. And then the next time we'll have that set of movements and we'll add on. <clears throat> And you can come down to the mat, feet together to touch, roll on up. You can also have your feet apart, roll up. Awesome, coming to Samasita He, palms together, eyes shut. We set our intention, we bring that to mind. We remember it is within us, we breathe it in. We breathe it out, getting our ujjayi breath for flowing, breathe in, breathe out, amazing, sweep your arms up overhead, extended mountain, we'll run through a couple of sun A's to start, just hold here and breathe, yes Michelle, yes Kim. Long through your side body, inhale. Uh, exhale, Samasitihi, palms together. Inhale, extended mountain, arms reach up, palms can touch overhead, gaze up at your fingertips. Exhale, forward fold, dive down. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, bring your back to flat. Nice, hold here, breathe. Get that leg. Feel the hamstrings open up. Inhale. Exhale, high to low plank. Flow under your vinyasa. Modifying onto the knees if you are having wrist issues. Don't push yourself through wrist issues because <clears throat> we need them for our yoga. <laughs> Amazing. Coming back to our downward facing dog, flowing through some sun A's. Feet together to touch, bend your knees, gaze forward, inhale. Exhale, forward, fold, step or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, extended mountain, reach up. 
Exhale, Samasi to he, palms at the heart. Inhale, reach up, little back bend. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, high to low plank. Holding a high plank is an awesome option as well. Coming back to our downward facing dog. Amazing. This time, just go your own breath, your own movement with that sun A, that traditional sun A. You can get started whenever you're ready. Amazing. All right. Back in our downward facing dog. Kim, I was just thinking I'm so excited to see you on a Sunday. <laughs> All right. Let's take a breath together. A grounding breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out your nose. All right. We're going to come down into that tabletop position. We're going to start with our bird dog, extending our right arm in front of us and our left arm back. A little bit of a different start here. Pull your knee in towards your elbow. Extend. We do this four times. Pull in. That was two. Extend. Pull in. And now I think I messed up the thing. But anyway, come in one more. All right. Now come open to your side plank. Extend that left arm up to the sky. Press into your back foot. Lift your bottom knee up. Crunch it in. That's one. Crunch it in, two, three, and four. Okay, now step your foot down. We're gonna come forward with our right leg to a low lunge. So right foot steps forward, low lunge. Now come down onto your back knee, <clears throat> kneeling crescent on Janayasana. All right, reach your hands up overhead. So just your right leg is forward. We hold here. Hugging our back heel, our front heel back. Yes, Julie. Nice. Pull the core up and in. Mula Banda, Uddiyana Banda. Amazing. Inhale. Exhale. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Inhale. Lift up your chest. Try to gaze up at the sky. If it hurts your neck, just gaze forward. But pull your palms down towards the mat. Squeeze your inner thighs together to help you stay up and to take pressure out of your knee. Nice. All right. Step your hands forward. Bring your hands forward. Come back to a low lunge. Okay. Now, from our low lunge, we're going to take a tiger curl. Usually I call this knee to nose. Okay. So bring your knee in towards your nose. Lift your foot away from the mat. Okay. Pull your heel in towards your glutes. Press them out away. Nice. All right. From here, we're going to do a drill. <laughs> Drop your shin down towards the mat, then pull it back up. Drop it down and pull it back in towards your chest. Let's take one more. Drop it down. Pull it in towards your chest. Lift that right leg high. Bend your knee. Open your hip. Take a little break. Okay, make sure your hands still have both have equal pressure in it. And then we step that foot down, downward facing dog. Good. Other side, bend your knees into a tabletop position. Extend your left arm forward, your right leg back. Inhale, exhale, bird dog, hug it in. Inhale. Extend, exhale, hug it in. That's two. I'll try not to lose count this time. Inhale, exhale, hug. Three, last one. Extend, press in. All right, press your right, your left arm down to the mat. Right foot goes back. Modified side plank. Extend, 
press into that back foot, crunch your elbow to your knee, to your bottom knee, crunch. You could also just be doing the side plank. This is three and four. Awesome, we come down, left foot comes forward and we come into our Anjane Asana kneeling crescent. Beautiful, we hold there. Hug the hips into the center so you're not popping out to one side. Notice when you do engage Mula Bandha, pelvic floor, Uddiyana Bandha, core, it makes you so much stronger to hold yourself there. Inhale. Exhale. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Inhale. Lift up your heart. Maybe you gaze up. Maybe you're gazing forward. It doesn't matter. It's where you are today. It's what your word is and what you want to find in yourself. No matter what, hugging your thighs in to hold yourself up. Amazing. Inhale. Exhale. Step your hands down. And tuck your back toes low lunge. Okay. Now we come into that knee to nose or tiger curl. Knee comes to our nose. We press them out away. Make sure your hands are shoulder width distance apart. If they're not, come out of it and get them there. Nice. All right, let's do this. We'll call it an elevator, okay? Lower it down to the first floor, your knee. Pull it back up. Get the cat pose, the protraction in the shoulder blades. Lower it down. Pull it up and in. Woo! No joke. <laughs> Lower it down. Pull it up. One more. Down and up. And then extend your leg up, bend your knee, open your head. Nice. Amazing. And then we come back to our downward facing jog. From here, let's throw, throw, let's flow through a chaturanga to let that side go. That, those two movements, those two, you know what I'm talking about. Let it go. And then we head back to the down dog. Okay. And we add on this time, right? Let's take a breath together. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, come down onto your knees, tabletop position. We start with our bird dog, extend your right arm forward, left arm back. Inhale, exhale, hug it in. One, Two, three, and four. Plant your right palm on the earth. Send your left leg back, modified side plank. And then we lift and crunch. One, two, three, and four. Nice. From here, step your right foot forward. Come down onto your back knee. Anjane Asana, kneeling crescent. Reach your arms up. Inhale. Exhale. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Inhale. Lift your heart up. Exhale. Low lunge. Knee to nose. Hug it in. Elevator it down. Lift up and down. Up and down. One more. Up. This time, step forward. Okay, so we're back in a low lunge. Okay, come up onto your fingertips. We're coming to a crescent lunge. Get yourself all set and then reach up, crescent lunge. <laughs> yes, everybody's doing such a good job. I know it's hard. Breathe here. Sometimes it's hard when like the flow is not as it normally is. So we just get used to it, kind of like life, right? <laughs> All right, then power through those back toes. Beautiful. All right, now we're gonna extend our fingertips forward into a reaching crescent, reaching crescent. So we're reaching forward, torso is over our um, thigh, lifting over our thigh, okay? And then step into a chair pose, oh my gosh the cruelty chair pose. So you step your back foot back, 
chair. Beautiful, sink it into the heels. And we're gonna go to a seated position. So just lower yourself down. Maybe you bring your hands to the earth or maybe you keep your hands lifted and send yourself back, okay? So we're in a seated position and from here, we're gonna go to boat pose, Navasana. Okay, hands behind your knees, lift your heart up. Okay, you can have your feet on the ground, your toes on the ground, lifted, whatever you'd like. Okay. Amazing. Now, if you want that extra core challenge, we're gonna lower from Navasana to Ardha Navasana. So boat to half boat, boat to half boat. You could also just be hanging in boat pose. We'll do one more. Nice, and then we'll lower and land on our backs. Take a break, just whatever movements you want to take for a few breaths. Okay, now we go for behind our knees. We're gonna rock ourselves up into a tabletop to start on the other side. So rock yourself up, tabletop position, okay? Amazing. Okay, tabletop position. Going to the other side, left arm reaches forward, right leg lifts back. Inhale, exhale, crunch. One, two, three. Yes, yes, Nikki, I know you're doing it. Four, awesome. Plant that left palm, send the right foot into the earth, come up into the side plank. Make sure you have the side plank shape first. And then crunch it in. Two, three, yes, Maria, and four. Amazing. Come down, we come to a low lunge, right? Yeah, knee into the nose, okay, and then elevator it down and lift it up. Oh, I think I missed the Anjaneyasana. Oops, we'll do that one next, okay? One more. And step that foot forward. Now we come to the Anjana Asana, my bad. Lift your hands up. Yes, Caitlin. All right, hug it in. And then hands behind the back, lift the heart up, inhale. Exhale, low lunge, bring your hands to frame your foot. Inhale, crescent lunge, reach your hands up overhead. We hold and breathe here. Since this is our first crescent on this side. Yes, Michelle. I love that tank top, Michelle. Good color. All right, squeeze the glutes. From here, we reach our hands forward into a reaching crescent. So everything in our bottom body is the same. It's just more of a challenge. We're reaching forward, spread through the fingertips. Nice. All right, for four, step into chair pose in three, two, and one. Step into chair pose, and we hold it here. Sink into the heels. We hold it for that four, three, two, and one. Now we lower, lower, lower down. We come into our boat pose, okay? And we can stay in our boat pose, or we can lower and lift Arda half boat to full boat. You could also do a couple of twists if you're in boat pose and you want, if you don't want to do the half boat, you could do some twists. Okay. You're just taking four of those half boat to boat and then land on your back. Awesome. All right. So we're on our back. Amazing. You just did a half hour of yoga <laughs> and a lot of specific core work. So congratulate yourself. That is, you know, a um, success in itself to just be here. Nice. And if you would like some water from here, I know I need it. You can grab your water or if you're comfortable, just stay on your back. We'll take a minute 
of quiet. We're just finding a break for water and quiet time. We're just gently preparing ourselves. We have one more round of that with one more thing added on. And then we get to the sweet rest. We get to try the hand headstand and get to the sweet rest. Just making time to take stock of what's happening after lots of crazy movements and quick movements. A good time to just be. And come back. Amazing. So come on back. And we'll come to our tabletop position. Nice. Okay, so one more round with one more add on. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> Extend your right arm, left arm back. Inhale, exhale, crunch in. Inhale, exhale, bird dog. Two more. One more. Nice. Okay, plant your right palm, side plank, crunch the bottom knee in, top elbow comes down. Extend. Crunch. One more. Crunch. Great. Step the right foot forward. Back knee comes down. Anjaneyasana, kneeling crescent. Beautiful. And then hands behind your back. Heart lifts up. Inhale. Exhale, low lunge. Tiger curl, knee to nose. Elevator it down. Lift it back up into cat pose, spreading your shoulder blades, elevator it down, lift up, two more, one more, nice, now right foot steps forward, come up onto your fingertips, inhale, crescent lunge, hands come up, exhale, reaching crescent, inhale, chair pose, step your feet back, feet, feet forward, excuse me. Exhale, sit down. Inhale, boat pose. Exhale, half boat pose. Inhale, boat pose. Plant your palms on the mat. We step back and go through our vinyasa. Didn't add on there. That's okay. Okay, other side and then We'll be done. Okay. Onto your knees. We can do it. Left arm, right leg back. Inhale. Exhale. Nice. Stay focused on the mat. Nice. Left arm plants into the earth. Modified side plank. And a crunch. Modified side plank, crunch, crunch, and crunch. Nice. Step that left foot forward, back knee goes down, Anjaneyasana. Hands behind the back, lift heart, you lift your heart up. Exhale, low lunge. Tiger curl, pull it in. 
bend it down, lift it up, bend it down, lift it up, bend it down. This time, lift it up and then step forward. Nice crescent lunge, reach up. Reaching crescent, reach forward, pull the core in. Chair pose, step forward, and then we lower, 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 lower. We're on our bums, lift up, Navasana. Lower down, Ardha Navasana. Lift back up, cross your feet, Chaturanga, last one. Up dog probably feels really good. And downward facing dog. Amazing. Okay, so come down onto your knees. We'll get a little bit of yogi playtime here before we officially start that sweet rest part of class. Okay, so um, lots of options for headstand. Um, I guess I will cue... Uh, tripod headstand this time because I did supported headstand the other day um, and always let me know if you didn't get to that class I can send you a video um, so our whole body is involved in a headstand and if you're not going to try this then just go to a child's pose um, or if you want to try something else then go ahead and get started on that um, so our whole body is involved we have to think of that with a headstand um, when we're doing a tripod headstand our hands are the base and our head is the top of a triangle. So think of that, the tripod, right? So we wanna arrange our hands in that way, okay? So let's try that here. So we press our palms into the earth, okay? And then we press the crown of our head. Remember that the crown of our head, we take a thumb to our third eye, extend our index finger, and that's the top where we want our head to go, okay? So we place our head there and make sure that it's at a triangle. It's a triangle okay, to support us. Okay? We have to hug those elbows in towards the center. We don't want them splaying out to the side. We want our power to be nice and compact in towards the center. Before we even do anything, we make sure that we're pressing through our fingertips, our base knuckles. We're just really engaging through our hands, firming in through the forearms. Okay. Now, then you can lift your hips up and walk your feet in. Okay, this one is uncomfortable for me, but I know other people really enjoy it. Um, so I just want to say if you do feel uncomfortable on your head, then don't do it. I'll show you how to do supported headstand as well. Okay, but walking your feet in as much as you can is a big key. I also find a lot of comfort from being near a wall to do this, just in, in general. Okay. If you're uncomfortable being on the crown of your head, then a supported headstand, make a basket grip, press your forearms into the earth, press your crown of your head inside that basket grip, and lift your hips up. Okay, so, so a lot of us can get the shape on the ground, but it's getting up that's hard. So I get that totally. <laughs> and that's where we have to really engage through our legs because that's the top part of our body in this. Yeah. Nice. And if you have any questions, you can come on and you can write in the chat. I will give us um, a couple of minutes to play around. And when you're done, just go to a child's pose. And I'm here by the chat if you need, or you can just unmute. And now I'll be quiet. <laughs> give you some time to play.
Same with all meet in a child's pose. Whenever you're playing around with the inversion, the child's pose is the place that you want to go after. If you ever practice on your own, just know that. I also always like to say that if you're working on this and you want to video yourself or ask me any questions, I'm always here. And now bringing that word that you have to mind, calling it up, bringing it top of mind. It's deep down within you sometimes. You just need the patience and time to bring it out. All right, we'll come up from our child's pose. If you have a block, then you can grab a block now as we go into our stretchy moments. Okay, we'll, we'll, you may want a block, okay? So we'll come to a seated position, block in front of you on the tall setting, um, the taller setting, okay? And we're going to take half Lord of the Fishes. So we'll start with, um, let's start with our left knee bent on the ground, okay? And then our right leg over our left. We hug in towards the center and then send our right hand back behind us. Onto the fingertips will help to give you a lift. And then our left elbow goes to the outside of that right knee, okay? And we lift up. We are always twisting from the navel, from the belly button. So we lift up and open. And we play around with gazing back. This is a nice twist. It also is good and opens our hips nicely as well. Amazing. Unwind. Come to center. And now we're going to take cow face legs. So you'll bring your foot a little, your right foot a little more over your left. And so that your knees are on top of each other, which may be a little challenging. So kind of negotiate space. You know, you may come out a little bit. Okay, just do your best. This is where the block will be in front of us. So we'll lift our heart up. You can bring your hands to the side onto your fingertips, lift up. You can stay here if you'd like, or you can walk your hands forward and rest your forehead on the block. Okay. Maybe you want two blocks too. Hopefully, you know, I didn't cue that ahead of time, but. And we'll take five breaths here. Nice. If your head is on the block, you can lift it back up. And here, you can see that your left knee is in a perfect position for pigeon pose, right? So we're just going to unlock, bring our right leg behind us and send it back. And we're going to come into our pigeon pose. But before we, you know, it kind of would be easy to go down into sleeping pigeon, but we're going to come up onto our finger, to, onto our hands, okay? Just to make sure we have the correct shape, okay? Point your toes to the back, lift your heart up, okay? And then maybe you walk your hands forward into a sleeping pigeon. Yeah. Taking about eight breaths.
And come back up onto our fingertips. From here, option to bring that left leg up and back, or just to come forward and switch sides. Your right leg coming this time up and over your left leg. Hugging in, or wait, no, other way. You guys probably already knew that. So our um, left leg is over, left hug up and in, and then extend back into half Lord of the Fishes. Artemisiasana. I'm working on that one. Lifting up through the crown of your head, finding that length. Amazing, and then coming to center, finding our cow legs, cow faced legs. Okay, so that means that our knees go over each other and I have to negotiate a lot for that. <laughs> okay, so just do your best. You can stay right here. You can feel it a ton in the hips. And maybe you want to come forward, with your head on the block. I'm personally realizing that one block is not enough for me, but I can just walk my hands forward and um, have it be on my fingertips, extending forward. Thank you think Amazing. From here, we come into our pigeon. The leg is already on the ground. The knee is already in. We unwind our right knees forward. We start with the with the prep. And then we walk forward if we'd like into a sleeping pigeon. Wherever you are, we hold for eight breaths. Nice. Amazing. From here, you can lift that right leg high and shake it out if you'd like. If you don't need it, then we're just heading onto our glutes. We're going to go onto our backs if you want sweatshirt, lights, all those things. Maybe a little water <laughs> before you go down. And from here, we'll take a bridge pose, lifting our hips up high, coming onto our shoulders to get more of a chest opening, finding a basket grip maybe behind our back. And think about pulling your heart up and back. Notice how that helps you lift your hips up higher. And away from your chest. Finding that length. 
Nice, and then release down onto your back. We'll take happy baby from here. Move in towards your chest. Flip your feet so that your soles of your feet are on the ceiling, facing towards the ceiling. And roll through. Finding that playfulness. Do you think with arm balances, the element of playfulness is important? Not taking ourselves too, too seriously. Going easy on ourselves. We're actually like literally asking ourselves to stand upside down. <laughs> From here, we'll bring our knees in towards our chest. Maybe a twist. Let's, let's all take a twist. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> knees off to the left. Right arm open. Bring your knees in towards center. Go off to the other side. Evening yourself out. Twisting helps us get a little new blood flow going in our body. Coming back through center. Our next step is our final resting pose, Shavasana. However you like to get there, maybe pulling the knees tight into the chest. Make it a feeling of full arrival to The purpose of the practice from the yoga philosophy perspective. Maybe you do come more for a workout and that's okay. But there's power in knowing that these poses, this practice was created to land yourself here in Shavasana Feeling peace. And not peace because there's no problems, but peace because we are learning how to handle it. And take slightly longer Shavasana than normal. Allow yourself to rest and be here and know that I will bring you back when it's time.
and stay here. We can begin to move number one. Taking a pose just for you. you remind yourself of the lessons of the practice. Or you just breathe in the sweet air of yoga. And we bring ourselves up to an easy seat. And come to heart center. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And if you wish, hands to third eye center as we bow forward in light love, truth, beauty, and oneness. Namaste. Yay. Thank you so much.